And on this one, let's just kind of go through the, let's kind of cover everything that we need to for this graph. All right, let's kind of go through the thing. So the first one is the domain. Um, remember, guys, the domain is the set of all x values. How far basically left is the graph going to how far to the right? Now, this one's interesting because you can see it, there's a break, right? But again, we're only thinking domain as x values. So we're defined here, defined here, defined here. At x equals 0, where this break is, do we have a defined point? Yeah. Yes. So it's undefined here, but it's defined there. So that kind of fills in the gap of the domain. And then it just continues all the way going to the right. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. I actually have all real numbers for the domain. The range is, again, looking at the y values. How low is the graph going to go? How high is the graph going? And you guys can see we have this low point here. right? It doesn't go lower than that. So that low point is from negative 2. But again, remember, negative 2 is a point on the graph. So we've got to use the bracket. Infinity is not a point. right? There was no point that represented infinity. So that's why it's excluded and we use the parentheses. So we have negative 2. And then here, even though that's undefined, it's defined there. And even though there's a gap here, the range is defined over there. So when you're looking up here on the board instead of sleeping, you can see that the range is going to be from negative 2 all the way up to infinity. All right, the next one is going to be the increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. So again, very, very important for you guys to understand. This is the x values. We're using the x values to describe. Increasing, when is the graph going up? Well, it looks like it's going up from here, from the x value of 2 all the way to infinity. Correct? So I'm going to say it's increasing from 2 to infinity. Not negative 2, how low it is. But from what x value does it start to go up? We can say it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 4. Again, not negative infinity to 3. We're talking about x values, not the y values. It's also decreasing from 0 to 2. And then we can say that it is constant from, let's see, what is this, negative 4 to 0. So again, guys, a lot of your brains automatically are going to want to start talking about y values. Right? You're going to say, oh, it's constant you know, at 3. No, that's the y. You've got to describe this in terms of x values, reading it like a book from left to right. Um, all right, let's go and look at C, which is going to be your discontinuities. And again, this is what I talked about. It's not on the notes. So therefore, this is what we're going to want to make sure. We can see that this is a discontinuity, right? The graph is not continuous. It's not connected. And hopefully, based on your notes, you guys can recognize this is a jump. And this jump occurs at x equals 0. So we want to give you the x value of where the discontinuity occurs. OK? Um, the extrema. So we want to look for relative or local min and max and absolute min and max. Well, obviously, guys, the arrows are shooting up. So we know that there's no absolute maximum, right? But then we want to look for a minimum or a, or a relative minimum. Is there a point within this picture that is a high point, but it's just not the absolute? Yes? Um, what if the jump is like on the point? Well, then there would be a discontinuity in your domain, but that's it. Like if this was just moved over one, yeah. yeah, then your domain wouldn't be all real numbers because you wouldn't have anything between 0 and 1, but and that's it. Would you still put the jump on where it first starts or where it ends? Uh, you're not going to encounter anything like that. Okay. So. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the max. Now here he looks like a point. Now remember, going back to our definition, the absolute maximum is where every point to the left and to the right is below it or equal to. So if you guys look at this point, to the right, do I have points below it? Yes. To the left, do I have points that are the same or below? Yes. So actually, that is a relative maximum. So we can call it a relative maximum at 0, 3. And therefore, um, we can say that this is a relative minimum at negative 4, 0. And then you can see that here, we also have an absolute lowest point, which is at 2 comma negative 2. So that would be called an absolute minimum 
at negative 4, 2. Not negative 4, 2. What am I talking about? At 2, comma, negative 2. Negative, geez, sorry about that. Hold on. Sorry. There we go. 2, negative 2. So the maximum point, if you have something that's like here is a point that's maximum. Everything to the left and to the right is below that point. So that is a maximum point, right? You, as long as you have points, if it, it can be the same to the left and to the right. So as long as it's the same or below, then it's going to be considered a map, absolute maximum. In. OK? And there are a relative maximum in because, and a max. Because what that's basically saying is it is possible to have the same, um, it is possible to have a multiple maximums, maximum and minimum points. Yes? Because everything to the left is above it, right? To the left is above it, and to the right would be the same. So therefore, they'd be represented as a minimum, right? Um, and let's go and look at E. Is this even, odd, or neither? Does it have any symmetry? Doesn't look like there's any symmetry here, so I just write no symmetry. Uh, F is going to be boundness. Again, is this restricted on how high it goes? No, it's unrestricted, right? Is it restricted on how low it goes? Yeah, so it's bounded below. Uh, e, F, oh, I forgot to G. G is going to be the end behavior. So as the graph continues going to the left, where's it going? Up. Right? We can just say it's rising up. Let's just keep it simple. As the graph continues going to the right, it's up. So we're going to say rises left, rises right. And the last thing is the intercepts. Again, guys, do not treat this as an x and a y intercept. It's not. It's an open circle. There's y, one y intercept at 0, 3. And there's one x-intercept at 4, comma, 0. And again, notice which coordinates are 0 and which ones are not, right? OK. All right, guys. Um,